we messed up the customer's order and in the team meetings we were having a laugh. We overcharged the customers and in the team meetings we were high-fiving each other. We totally messed up the customer's orders and we were having a laugh and high-fiving each other in the team meetings. Hi everyone, my name is Ajmal Mushtaq. Um, by way of brief personal introduction, I worked five years in a family business with my dad when I left school. I've worked 10 years in Accenture, which is a global management consultancy. I'm going to share four business insights from Mushtax, which is a business I built up and sold. And today I'm the chief executive of Boss Pizza, which is a tiny pizza company with big growth plans. Okay, if you can imagine a tiny takeaway, and you've all used takeaways, if you can imagine a tiny takeaway, that was our starting point in 2009. And within the space of four years, we actually grew that to being something quite special. The f one of the first things we did is we implemented a 29 minute delivery guarantee for our customers. We had great food, great service, great price point, and then on top of that, we, we, on top of that, we implemented a 29 minute delivery guarantee. That helped us wipe out the competition. And within four years, I built the biggest takeaway kitchen in Britain. We were outputting one meal every 15 seconds. We had 55 people in the kitchen. So if you imagine takeaway, I am a takeaway owner. That was a takeaway kitchen. That was effectively a money printing machine. It was phenomenal. Right. So how do you take something that's like a tiny little takeaway and build something that's near perfection. So I'm just going to share four insights, the thinking behind the scenes. There's four different numbers I want to talk about. There's four numbers I want to talk about. The first number is number one, huge growth. For your business, there is one thing, there is one thing for your business <coughs> that can help it explode, it can take it on to a whole different level. We're talking home care, right? I don't know what that is, but I can tell you all, it sits somewhere in the realm of difficulty. If you take the most challenging parts of your business, there is a massive opportunity sitting right there and it's up to you to identify it. And then, and then you can start working in that opportunity. And as leaders of the organization, what you need to do, or what we did, we dropped the guard, right? We allowed our team to make mistakes for six months. So if someone said to me, listen, we've totally messed up um, and we've overcharged the customer and the customer's furious and he's left really, a really bad review, high five me, well done. Thank you for sharing that, right? What caused you to do that? What, what, what were the circumstances that allowed that customer to be, to be messed up? And then we would work in that. And then someone else said, oh, the delivery took one hour and the customer was really unhappy. High five, well done, mate. Right, let's talk about it. So we, as leaders, we dropped to the guard. We allowed the teams to feel safe in bringing problems to the table. And at that table, we were able to implement all of the changes necessary to create a near perfected system. So open discussion is absolutely vital um, for that. And that enabled us just to cr deliver service on a whole different level. The team would be, would be chomping at the bit to come and tell us that they've messed up. And then we would all have a laugh about it. That's how safe the environment is. So as a leader, that's something you should perhaps think about. Um, make, create a culture where people can bring the problems to you. The next number I want to talk about is the number one. Output. If I were to ask you, Lady in Green, what's your name? Amanda. Amanda. Hi, Amanda. My name's Ajmal. Amanda, I need you to double your productivity. Can you do that? 
what, what, what are you really thinking? Just imagine no one else is here, right? It's, it's me and you, right? There's only the two of us, Amanda. Right, you really need to double your productivity. What, what are you really thinking behind the scenes? Yeah, right. Time. Yeah, time. You're thinking, no chance. This is what I would be thinking, no chance. So we really wanted to go from this tiny takeaway to outputting one meal every 15 seconds, and that required a shift from every single person in the team. They had to perform at a whole different level. And the way we did that is we came up with a 1% improvement culture in our business. We challenged our team, do what you do, but just do it 1% better. Can you do what you're doing just 1% better? And the answer is, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not too difficult. And then see the following week, challenge them again and challenge them again. And see these tiny little 1% improvements. You might think, oh, it's just a 1% improvement. But see, over the period of 18 months, the business became unrecognisable. The output became unrecognisable just as a result of having those tiny little 1% improvements. Um, unrecognisable the business became. Okay, the next number I want to talk about is the number one. So we've got great food, great service, and great people. It was absolutely brilliant, right? And that gave us the confidence to go out there and acquire customers. So how do we, how do we then grow the business? And our marketing strategy, our customer acquisition strategy was very, very simple. One customer at a time. We were hell bent on thinking, right? Today, what do we need to do today to bring in one more customer? Remember back there, I've got an amazing team, amazing food, amazing service, and that allowed us as a management team to go forward and market like there's no tomorrow, knowing that we've got such amazing things going on behind there. So every single day, the main thought that the leaders and the management team are thinking is, right, what can we do to get one more customer in? And that's how we grew it, one customer at a time, total commitment to excellence. Everyone in the company knew the LRPC of every single customer. LRPC is lifetime revenue per customer. Someone buys a £20 takeaway, that customer is not worth £20. That customer's worth £3,000 if they buy £20 takeaway every week for three years. So we looked at customers slightly different. It wasn't just 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds. LRPC was something we really focused on. And going back to the acquisition, it was very simple. Attract one, bring them to the business, retain them, got them, right? Go out there into the world, attract another customer, bring them into the business. Every single thing that we did was all about customer acquisition. I got stopped in the motorway in, when the new M74 was built. I was doing 71 miles an hour in a 50, you know, part of the, the stretch is 50 miles an hour. I got stopped by the police, uh, got into my glove department, pulled out a business card in the menu. They said, can you come and sit in the back of the car? So I was sitting in the back of the police car. And the first thing I said, right, guys, I own uh, It's an award-winning takeaway. Here's a couple of menus and here's my business card. We spoke about lamb bunas, chicken tikka kormas, <laughs> what their favourite dishes are. And then about four or five minutes after, they said, OK, Mr. Mushtaq, they sort of dropped it. They, they forgot who they, where they were. They said, Mr. Mushtaq, do you know why we pulled you over? Um, but the point is, every single opportunity um, we used to promote the business. And about three weeks later, those guys uh, came in. Uh, one of the police officers came into the, into the, the, the takeaway. So that was it. We were hell-bent on just spreading the word, get, handing out business cards. We had 30 different marketing channels for the business, ranging from 40-foot billboards to branded cars all the way down to like little business cards and little A A5 slips. I spent 45% of my time religiously promoting the business. 8% of revenue... Whatever we earned, if we earned £100, £8 went in marketing across 30 channels. And now we're using TikTok. Um, who's on TikTok? Let's have, let's have a show of hands. Okay, about half of you. Yeah, It's a good app. It's a good app. I think a lot of people think TikTok's about dancing and silly videos. And a lot of it is, but there's a lot of good stuff. 
All of our revenue is generated through TikTok. Brand awareness is all done through TikTok. I don't even regard myself as being on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. It's all on TikTok. We generate millions of views on TikTok. So that's another marketing channel that you know perhaps you could you could think about. The next number I want to talk about is the number one. So all of this is great and this should have been the first slide, but I wanted to leave this to the end. There's no point in doing all of the other stuff if you're directionless as an organization. As an organization, we were very deliberate in what we wanted. We wanted to be the number one brand for Indian food in Britain. We wanted to be the biggest and the best. So we set that up in the vision statement. And the vision statement was very, very straightforward. This is a shortcut version of it. There's a few more words than this. The vision statement was, we want to be the number one brand for Indian food in Britain. And I would say within about three years, we achieved it. We were in the media, the news, um, magazines, radio, national radio, like hundreds and hundreds of times over the 15 years that we, we over the 14 years that we had that. So within the first three, four years, we actually became uh, recognizable. And when we opened up the new kitchens, the sales spoke for themselves. So we became the number one brand. So that starts from the top, right? And then what about the team? So for the team, it was very simple. Again, a shortcut version. Your mission is very simple. We need to provide the best quality food with the best service. That was a mission statement. And when you're setting up a mission statement, and I've done a lot of work on this, when you're setting up a mission statement for your organization, it has to be simple and understandable for the team. I worked in London for Accenture. I, I consulted to some of the biggest banks in the country and some of their mission statements would be like a paragraph long and I couldn't understand it. And I thought, if I can't understand it, you know, other people are going to be in the same boat. So make your mission statement as simple as possible. And then underneath that, what drives that is the culture. And I heard you speak about that earlier on. So for us, it was quality food, teamwork, customer delight, responsibility. And one that I'm not ashamed of, profit. We're in business to make profit. The more you earn, the more you can share, the more you can pay out in bonuses, the more you can grow. So that was it. So vision is probably the starting point. Vision is definitely the starting point and then all of the other things follow under that. And that is um, the end of my very short presentation today. Thank you very much. You. Any questions about anything? We're going to have, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, to be number one. Yep. There must have been times where that seemed to be quite funny <coughs> or, or challenges would come up as they do in any business. How, how did you how did you keep focused on that being number one despite everything Excellent. coming at you? Great. I turned up and I said to the team, remember, think tiny takeaway. Um, and there was about six of them, so just imagine it's this table here. Hi guys, how we doing? We want to be the number one takeaway in Britain. We want to be the biggest, most insane takeaway ever. And they're probably thinking, what are you smoking? You've just arrived from London. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, I could, I, the, their heads weren't moving, but I could see, <laughs> no chance. But we had team meetings every single Saturday without fail. We're embedding the culture. The first thing I would say at that team meeting is, right guys, we are going to be the number one Indian takeaway, the number one takeaway operation in Britain, that was rehearsed week in, week out, without fail for years. And then we had metrics, hygiene, food, sales, customer service, we were tracking all of that data. And we started off down here, and then we could see improvements on a weekly basis. And then we were winning awards. And then I think probably about a year and a half in, people started to recognize, wait a minute, there's something this is going to happen. And it did. Within, uh, within two years, my God, two, two and a half years, our sales were insane. And then I remember when we started building the kitchen. I'm building a kitchen now. You know what a kitchen looks like. 
and I remember when the steel frame went up for the kitchen, I went to the uh, uh, I went to the site with the team. I was just out the back, and when they saw the steel frame go up, they were like, "Oh my God, that is that is that is not a kitchen. That was like an <coughs> aircraft hangar of a kitchen." So yeah, after about two three years, I started to believe. And if you want to achieve anything big in life, guarantee you now you're going to be bombarded with negativity and criticism. And there's going to be times you're going to think, why am I even bothering? No, but you just stick in there and do it. Great question. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? I Sahil. Consultancy. <coughs> you know, I was a, a world-class company like mm -hmm. Ipsia, one of the top four consultants in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, these are very expensive and probably very expensive education. Mm -hmm. Why the heck would you want me to start a heavy takeaway ship? Yeah, interesting. So good point. Good question. I had a dream job, yeah. jet set lifestyle, well paid in London, five star hotels wherever we went. It was fantastic, lived that for 10 years, but see after 10 years, been there, done that, but there was a burning desire inside me. I thought, you know what, I've got so much more to give and I just knew I had it in me and it took me two years to decide, should I leave my business or should I not? Two years, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then I decided, I'm just going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that could happen is I start a business, I fail, end up back in a job. So then I decided just to go for it. <coughs> and it was just, it was probably the best decision I've made. I'll tell you now, right? Working um, for yourself is, wh what do you guys think? Do you think it's easier being the boss or is it easier being an employee? What do you think? <laughs> Don't worry that Sahil's here. He's not. <laughs> Sorry? Employee is it is harder? No, it's easier. Okay, easier. There's no right or wrong answer, right? What do you think? Anyone else? Someone from this side of the room? Is it easier or hard? Easier, yeah. I think it's a bit of both because as an employee, depending where you are in that business, you want it to succeed just as much as the, the, the owner. So you take quite a lot of the responsibilities on you as well. Yeah. Okay, so a anyone think it's actually easier or harder being a, the, the owner? Okay, I can tell you from a, having been on both sides, right, in corporate and as the owner of a business, working for yourself or being the owner of a business is, in ways, it's much easier because you don't need to. It's all right, don't worry about it. Um, it's easier. Uh, in the terms like, for example, I don't need to clock in at nine o'clock. I don't need to be there till five o'clock. I don't need to do X, Y, Z. Um, but see up here, there is no off button. You are on 24 seven and that stress follows you around wherever you go. Am I right? I've had it for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Nice one, great question. A any other questions? I have one. Sure. Um, you talked about culture earlier. Yep. Hmm. And you kept saying one breakthrough, but the statement was different. So that was the one focus. But how do you keep driving that culture in your business? How do you keep the culture alive? Yeah. How do you bring it to life? How do you bring it to life? Good question. Um, never get personal with someone. I'll come to that's, that's just reminding me of a great point. Uh, the culture, again, it was drummed into people, it was rehearsed, it was lived, it was breathed every single day. And the key thing is, as leaders of an organisation, you need to respect your team. And the one thing I never did, and I've never done, I've never spoken ill of my team members to anyone else. Um, I've never disrespected anyone, and I've never, uh, I've, I've never, I've never been personal with anyone. So, for example, I've shouted at a lot of people during my time, but when we leave at the end of the day, we're still all friends. So it's not like I'll take you as an example, Sahil. I'll say Sahil. Say, oh, you're fucking rubbish at what you do. That, that's crap what you did. Um, I never, ever said that. I would always point it to the work. I would say, come on, Sahil, the make time's 12 minutes. Um, and we're sitting at 16 minutes. We're four minutes behind. Come on, let's get the ball rolling on this. On this. Come on, let's get, let's get a move on. It would be like that. I would never, ever make it personal with the team. So you're never offending the team. Always blame the standards or say, right, blame the standards or compare the benchmark rather than individuals. Uh, so, so that was it. So there was a culture of growth 
Another way to improve culture is if the team's doing well, reward them well, recognize them, say thank you to them. Something as simple as that is something we forget to do. I had this girl working for me, Kirsty, her name was. She was a solid seven out of 10. She wasn't like a superstar and she wasn't, um, she was okay. She was seven out of 10. She would always turn up and just do the work, right? So I would say she was, she was very good at that. Very, very good. And I, she was just walking past me one day and I thought, Kirsty, I've never actually told you this, but I really, really appreciate the fact that you've always done a good job You've never given us any headache. You don't complain. You're just like a solid performer. And I don't think I've ever said thank you. And I said, thank you very much. That Kirsty, honestly, she was on cloud nine. She was like overwhelmed, like over the moon. And that reminded me, I used to do that a lot, but then we get busy. See, when you're busy in your work, you forget to say thank you. You forget to say thank your team. And I think that's something we need to get better at. If someone's doing a great job, stop them actually stop them and have a conversation with them and just say, listen, you do a great job. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I haven't told you this, but I really appreciate the work you do. That is such a powerful thing to do. So all of these things contribute to the culture. Next question. As much as our sectors are like, vastly different, our recruitment challenges are similar. We have a, a high turnover sector in hospitality. Mm -hmm. Okay, two things. Um, our sectors are different, they're not. Me making a takeaway and you providing home care is exactly the same. I'll explain this, I usually have this in one of my slides. This organization, do you do marketing? People management? Tax? VAT? Branding? PR? Growth? health and safety, um, you name it, every single element of the business that you do, we do the same. The principles of running every single business in the world are exactly the same. The final output, you're providing care, I'm providing food. Underneath all that, the principles of business are exactly the same. So what I would say, for starters, don't think of yourself, oh, you're in the home care business, you're in the business of business, and the principles are exactly the same. So, and the second part of your question was? Attract staff specifically to come to work, attract them to come to work for your brand. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, for 12 years, we never had to advertise to get staff into our business. There was a waiting list. There was a queue of people wanting to join our business. We brought people on. We looked after them. We paid them well. There were two pay increases a year. Um, they got benefits, they got bonuses. We had weekly team meetings, prize giveaways. For example, what one team meeting we turned up, I said, can anyone tell me about the five core values? And they're like, no one knew them, despite posters being up all over the place. <laughs> Three weeks later, I said, does anyone know the five core values? And one guy knew them, took out 500 pound, gave it cash to him. And the rest of them are like, that bloody hell. So it, it says we, we did random giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to give it away. It was a lesson that if I say something, you, you know, it's quite safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, ha we just had such a great culture and we recruited great people at the start. And then we said to them, have you got any friends that you know that want to work here? And they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, we do, actually. So what actually happened is we actually had friends and then friends of friends. It was like one big, I know that's cliche, we had one big family working for us, for us almost. At one point, we had seven guys from Hamilton Rugby Club working for us, and they would love coming to work because it's like coming to work with your mates. And then word gets around, and then other people wanted to join, and then their friends wanted to join. For 12 years, we never advertised, which is phenomenal. Okay, any other questions? I'm going to be around um, after the presentation. I'll hang around for a little while. If anyone wants to come up to me and ask me anything, feel free to do so. 
Um, and uh, that's my TikTok handle if you want to follow me. Just a word of warning, it's at Ajmal Mushtaq. There are dozens of accounts that are scam accounts. They'll follow you and then try and sell you crypto. That's not me, I hate crypto, so just a word of warning. But that's all from me. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.